you. Hi, Ange. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, mate. Uh, ahead of your first FA Cup game, where does it rank on your priority list as a manager and what are your memories of it throughout your time being a football fan? Uh, Priority-wise, it ranks with every other game I've been in charge, mate. They're all important. There's not one that you don't uh, you don't take um, sort of full focus on. And, uh, yeah, I guess my memories are similar to anyone who, who loves football. Um, <clears throat> I think... Uh, the FA Cup's a significant event in a, in a sort of global scale because the uh, you know, FA Cup final day uh, pretty much reaches every uh, corner of the globe and so everyone's had a sort of um, some sort of experience with it. And, um, yeah, great competition, great tradition, great history and uh, looking forward to us uh, having a crack at it. You obviously won, I think it was three Cups at Celtic. Can you talk a bit about what impact winning a cup has at a club and when you think of this club in particular how much of an opportunity does it present to win a trophy yeah look i think um every club you know that's kind of um you start every season with with hopefully the the ambition and the, and the dreams of winning uh silverware because he knows you know the impact it has on 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 the fans more than anything else and uh yeah obviously um from my perspective it's an opportunity for us to to try and win a competition and uh you know that's um you know for the club of our stature that has to be the ambition every year is that you go into every competition with the aim and and, and the hope of uh of uh, winning some silverware of course it wouldn't be the first week of january without a transfer question mm -hmm. uh, tottenham and genoa in talks with uh, radu dragusin i just wondered you've talked about in the past about your priority of being a centre back mm. and the need maybe to get that done early, are you confident that you'll get your wish in that? I mean, I, it's it's hard to say because I mean, obviously, I don't get involved in that side of it, and um, you know, as as I said, sort of leading into the window, is that we've got some objectives and some targets, and uh, you know, and we'll we're working towards that. People are working. <coughs> behind the scenes and, and sort of who are in charge of those areas are working towards that. And, uh, you know, um, my role within that is to, you know, whenever I'm s sought for guidance or clarity as to, you know, which way we need to go, I, I provide that. Thank you. Hi, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, mate. Um, top four, when, when top four became a Champions League spot, kind of the feeling was the FA Cup took a, a back step in terms of importance, in terms of magic, in terms of romance. Being a manager whose team are gunning for top four this season, is that is that accurate or is still winning still where the, the holy grail of a manager, a player, a club? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I know what I feel about it and that is that, like I said, every competition I've been in, I want to win. So, you know, it doesn't really, I don't really sort of, rank them or, or <clears throat> diminish one against the other. I think to win any trophy, you've got to earn it, uh, whatever competition it is, whatever, you know, uh, <coughs> whether that's domestic or, or you know, um, continental, it, everything is hard earned. So, um, you know, I think um, I haven't sensed anything within this football club that suggests that, you know, um, this is a competition that is not important um, to try and... Uh, you know, achieve the, the club does have a history of in this in this competition. They've won the FA Cup numerous times, and some of uh, the greatest memories that many living Spurs supporters would have would be uh, around FA Cup. So yeah, I, I certainly don't see it that way. I don't, and I don't think one really impacts the other. I don't know why you know whether whatever your ambitions are in the league, why that has to affect your ambitions in the other competition. Does this feel like a cup game because you're playing a team that's in your league, Burnley? I mean, you can't do anything about the draw, clearly. But, I mean, because you're playing a team that's in your league, does it does it feel anything different to a Premier League game? It does, yeah. And I think you have to treat it differently. I think, um, you know, teams often take a different approach because, you know, the Premier League <coughs> has its own pressures and, and, and sort of... Um, focuses for every team you know they we're all sort of fighting for different things and every week is um you realize that that's um there's always a consequence to everything you do and it, it affects you, not just this week and next week but cup games you kind of know it's uh that's it you know you've got to give everything on the day 
teams, I think, tend to play a bit freer, uh, less constrained, um, knowing that, you know, progress can only happen if you get the job, job done on the day. So I think it does take a different feel, even though it's a Premier League opponent. <coughs> and, you know, Burnley have had a decent running in cup competitions over the last couple of years. So um, we're expecting a, a tough game. Finally, as it's January, um, obviously you're being linked with players, which you've spoken about. Players being linked with moves away, including Eric Dyer, um, who can now sign for a, a club abroad and move in the summer. You've also been linked with a, a move to West Ham. Any any truth in that at all? No idea. No, not, my, not on my radar. That Let's one. keep Eric. I think Eric is, uh, you know, contracted to this football club and uh, he's as much in charge of his own destiny as anyone else. Did we get an injury update? Yeah. Uh, so from last week, um, <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, Alejo, um, you know, obviously it was a fairly significant injury. So he had scans on whatever day it was half the game. And um, <clears throat> it's going to keep him out for probably, probably a couple of months. So won't need surgery, but some significant ligament damage. So disappointing for him because he's kind of worked hard to get an opportunity in the last couple of weeks. He was kind of growing into it and... Um, yeah, really disappointed for him. Um, in terms of last week, um, everyone else is uh, is no issue in injury front. Um, uh, guys coming back, uh, Mickey Van Der Ven has trained with us this week, which is which is good. So he's got through sort of three sessions. Um, not sure about tomorrow uh, whether he'll be involved or not. And uh, I think everyone else has his. And James Madison, he's not as far along as Mickey obviously but no, do you think not, we'll see him this he, month he's, he's not training with us yet mate and as I've said before until they train with us it's hard for me to kind of put a timeline on it he's um he's out running with the with a sports science crew but not not with us and not likely to be with us over the next sort of couple of weeks I don't think and Christian similar sort of thing yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, Christian's still very early stages I just wanted to ask you uh, about Richardson. I know you've spoken about it a bit but Obviously, he is in. He's in great form and had had that difficult period. I just wondered if there's anything you could sort of put your finger on as to how things have changed for him on the pitch. Anyway, I, I, I think I'll say consistently. He's just he's free of injury. He feels good physically, and he's just able to perform at the levels that he wants to. And he couldn't do that at the start of the year, <clears throat> even though he was playing for us. Like I said, he was fairly restricted in his movements and. I think it's no sort of magic cure. He got some treatment for what he needed to get treatment for, and uh, he feels good now. He feels his body feels good, and and yeah, obviously then then you know he's scoring goals, which makes him feel a little bit more confident in himself. Um, but uh, you know, aside from that, he's working really hard for the team at the moment, which has been really important for us, especially the last sort of you know, two three weeks. So um, he's going well, and hopefully more to come. And just lastly, for me, have you decided on the captain for tomorrow and are you able to tell us who that will be? No, not really. I'm not putting too much. The captain is Sonny. Sonny's the club captain and Matters and Romero. So whoever wears the armband tomorrow is not really that significant to me. What's more important is that, you know, Sonny's been an outstanding leader, <clears throat> both in deeds, actions and words, and we're going to need players to step up tomorrow, irrespective of who's wearing the armband. We need, we need to try and fill that sort of... Uh, breach it or hole that he's left uh, because he's, cause I think he's been outstanding for us so um, again I'm not putting too much thought in that whoever it is it'll be but you know we'll need a number of people to sort of stand up in that area just in terms of experience on the day Hi Ange um, I'm sorry if you mentioned there I completely missed his name Pat Matisar is he okay? Yeah he's fine he's gone he's with the but he's team. No hamstring issues for him at all. No, no, it's fine. It's oh, fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, back to the transfer window. Just wondering, is, in in your head, whether you share it or not, is there a kind of an, an ideal number of new faces you'd like to see this month? No, because again, yeah, it doesn't work that way. It's there's a lot of sort of moving parts in in a window like this, and um, <clears throat> like I said, January you don't expect too much sort of in terms of uh, activity, but <clears throat> I think. Um, you know, I've said, again, I've said before that what's important is every opportunity we have to strengthen the team and strengthen the squad, we should try and try and take. And depending on sort of uh, 
the opportunities we have to do that in this sort of month, we'll um, we'll try and do. And um, <coughs> Sergio Reguilón's returned. Is is he likely to head back out on loan? Because obviously you're in this situation where if you were to play him, he, he then can't go out to a third club. Yeah, again, I think that'll be um, sort of dictated by a lot of other factors, but not on my radar at the moment. Okay. And just last one from me, Dane Scarlett. Obviously... A good move in terms of experience with switch, but probably didn't get the game time he would have wanted. Is he someone you maybe have to put an arm round, give him a bit of a reset now for the second half of the season? How does it work with him? It works that he's back with us and he trains every day and he's got an opportunity to show us what he can do, mate. I mean, that's the life of a footballer. There's no point, um, you know, he went to Ipswich to play. He didn't, uh, whatever reason, and uh, he's got to take some responsibility of that, but didn't work out. But he's back here now. He's training with us. And uh, like all the other young players, they're before me every day and um, they can put a compelling case to play. Thank you. Back to James, please. Hi, Ange. Um, you got a little bit of criticism for the team you picked in the League Cup game at Fulham. D does that, does the reaction to that influence your team selection at all for tomorrow? What do you reckon? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, yeah. Fair summation. No, look, that's all right. People are allowed to criticise. I don't know how to get it right, but I... Put out a team I thought could win us the game that night, and we lost on penalties to a Premier League club away from home that's doing pretty well there. So um, it was early in the season. I know how hard it is to play our football, and if I didn't want to expose the whole group to three games in a week that early in the season, so. Um, but when you lose, I mean, I guess part of the reason for that was obviously because the club's not won anything <laughs> since two thousand and eight, and there yeah. is that. There is that sense perhaps that there's a frustration that in the past some managers have not taken the domestic cup competition mm. seriously and that's mm. sort of elongated this weight for, for silverware yeah. is that is that whole issue something that you're aware of uh, look I, I mean not that i'm aware of it, but i think i said before that there can't be a desperation to win a trophy because it cures all ills because it doesn't because as soon as you win one what do you think the fans are going to say well it's okay you don't have to win one for another 15 16 years no they, they want more so it's about putting yourself in a position where you can compete for these things regularly you know and, and give yourself every opportunity to win every competition you're in because but you know it's not like like i said <coughs> just winning a trophy and thinking that that's going to be enough at, at a football club like this which you know is my the context for what i'm saying then yeah, like I said, the, there'd be a demand from not just supporters, but players, everyone involved in the club, well, we want more of this. So you can't just sit back and say, well, but yeah, but hold on, I've just delivered a trophy. Shouldn't I have some sort of, you know, um, latitude now to, to, to not be successful? It doesn't work that way. So, I, I like I said, I'm determined to bring success to the football club, um, but it's not a desperation for something that, you know, is going to, you know, give us some respite for what's ahead. When you're a big football club, there should be a constant demand for success. Because there's often this argument that if, if you win a domestic cup, it's like a stepping stone to bigger trophies, but it, obviously it doesn't always work like that, does it? No, it doesn't, you know, and there's plenty of evidence to suggest that actually doesn't work at all that way uh, unless you can back it up. Um, and, and again, at a football club like this, which, you know, should be competing for honours every year, um, I just don't think winning one trophy should be the holy grail. It should be creating a team and, and a club that's competing for trophies every year. Can you just section with George, please? Hi, Ange. Um, how did Rodrigo Bentico sort of hold up after Sunday? And what did you make of his performance in that number six role? Yeah, he was he was good. Um, <clears throat> obviously, he was, you know, he was feeling, feeling the effects of the game, mm. but not any anything sort of injury-related, So that which was good and... Um, it was good to get him out there, and he he felt good being out there. You know, he's uh, like I said, with a lot of the injured lads, obviously, you know they they want to help out, and and he's you know he's he kind of thought he'd done the hard bit getting back the first time, and then you kind of have another setback. So I don't think he fancied you know really <coughs> really long rehab sort of regime again. You know, he was wanting pretty keen to get back involved and. Uh, you know, I was happy to, to, to give him the, the minutes he did and um, you can see his quality straight away. He's, he's, he's a very, very good footballer and I can't wait to sort of, you know, um, I've said before that, you know, he's when he's kind of back up to speed from a physical perspective, I think he's going to be a significant 
contributed for us. And you're clearly going to miss Son now for for this period. But how much encouragement have you taken by kind of a growing relationship, it seems like, with Brennan Johnson and Richarlison, those two goals, <coughs> Everton and Bournemouth, sort of identical goals, it feels like there's kind of something clicking there for them too. Yeah, it's it's developing. I, you know, I think I've said before that, you know, I think still it's our greatest area of sort of growth still is that front third. I still think we've got so much more uh, to improve on. and um, But every week we're sort of seeing seeds of, of that and, and, and the guys developing and getting a better understanding, as you said. But, you know, we're not – Sonny's a oh, – you know, you name a team of the year at the moment, he'd be in it. He's been a hell of a player for us and it's a big loss for us, another one. So, again, we're going to have to really raise everyone's levels to, to, you know, to cover the absence of another significant contributor, probably the most significant contributor for us so far in the season. And just finally from me and um, more of a sombre note, um, Spurs fan, 16 years old, Harry Pittman was killed on New Year's Eve. Um, the club are going to show his image tomorrow during the 16th minute and fans are got encouraged to sing he's one of our own. It won't be much for the family, but does that sort of show football at its best and, and when it can be more important than just a, a game of football? Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, you, you, you don't even want to be thinking about the, the circumstances of the family and, you know, that again, you know, where we are as a society, the, the, the fact that these things still happen and... You know, young lives are, are lost for absolutely no reason. And um, like I said, I, you can't even, I couldn't even contemplate, you know, the, the grief and the pain that the family's going through. But, you know, that's, like I said, I've always felt football clubs are more than just the embodiment of what we do as, you know, in sport. They are an extended community, an extended family for a lot of people. And uh if it even gives them the smallest amount of comfort, then <clears throat> yeah, it's the least that we can do and, and our fans um, can do. But um, yeah, it's just, you know, um, like I said, tragic and, and, and inconceivable just uh, that people, you know, families um, still have to suffer this sort of grief. Oh, I'd hate for that to be the case because you'd miss out on some fantastic talent. We've got a generational player from Asia that's been representative of our club and, you know, if we lose him every four years for five weeks, I think it's a real small place to pay. And I love international football. I think it's important. I don't like the way the calendar has been crammed, but the events, the, the tournaments they're going to now are significant tournaments. They're not sort of just thrown together in the last couple of years. The African Nations Cups are very important. The Asian Cups are very important for these nations. Um, you've got to understand that these guys, this is where they were brought up. You know, this is where, you know, a lot of their, who they are today comes from. And when they go represent and put their shirt on, it's not just another game of football for them. So I'm sure Sonny would love to have been here with us and Pape, but it doesn't diminish what they do there. And I would never rule out somebody because, you know, they're going to represent their country or they're representing a country, helps a player develop both professionally and personally. Um, you talked about Sonny earlier and what good players been this season. Um, uh, he's been nominated for well, um, he's on, the Asia Cup's been on, on the agenda for a long time, though. So, how long have you been preparing for this absence, and are you, do you feel as prepared as you could be? Yeah, I was. We've been preparing for since the start of the season, but I wasn't preparing to lose half a dozen other players at the same time. So, you know, you kind of um, understand that. I mean, if you know, if we had some of our injured players available and fit, there would be, the absence would be diminished, albeit he's still a significant 
person at our football club. Like I said, it's not just about <clears throat> what he does as a player. He's the captain of the club. He's been our leader, a standing leader from day one, um, on and off the field, and it's a significant absence. So, um, but you know, from that perspective, in terms of the presence he have had on the field, you know, if Romero and Madison were available, then yeah, you could diminish it, but they're not available. So, with all the other challenges we've got, it makes it more difficult but it's been like that from day one I think you know we've we've had to overcome these things and it's just another challenge for us. Mm -hmm.